let us discuss very important result of gamma function okay it gives a relation gamma n plus 1 is equal to n gamma n so this result is very useful when we find the value of gamma of any number okay so let us start with the left hand side and we will try to bring right hand side so let us start so i am going to use definition so that's why i am writing by definition gamma n plus 1 i am using simply a definition of gamma function which we have already seen in previous video so definition says it's 0 to infinity e raised to minus x it is fixed right after that we write x raised to one number which is less than this number by 1 so we have n plus 1 so obviously i suppose to write gamma sorry x raised to n here dx so see this uh, integral has a limit infinity that means it is improper integral okay we cannot solve it directly what will i do i will write here limit t tends to infinity 0 to t e raised to minus x x raised to n dx okay so now we can solve the integration here we have two variables okay so two functions e raised to minus x and x raised to n so these two functions we have there is a product between them and we have to find its integration so that means i have to use integration u into v formula okay so for that we need to arrange those functions by rule l i a t e l stands for logarithmic i stands for inverse trigonometric s stands for algebraic t stands for trigonometric and e stands for exponential okay according to this we will arrange our function so the this one e raised to minus x is exponential function it should be last function second function so that's why i will interchange limit t tends to infinity integration 0 to t x raised to n e raised to minus x dx okay so i'm going to use v into v formula for integration i hope you know this formula integration u v u integration v minus integration derivative of u integration of v right okay so this is a formula so this formula i'm going to use what is my u this is my u and what is my v this is my v let us use the formula limit t tends to infinity right we have to write u as it is x raised to n okay and uh, its integration e raised to minus x upon minus 1 the multiple of x is minus 1 okay so that's why i'm writing at denominator 0 to t minus integration 0 to t after that we have to find derivative of u what is its derivative n x raised to n minus 1 into integration of v what is this integration e raised to minus x upon minus 1 dx okay okay so yeah let us simplify it further limit t tends to infinity okay see i am putting upper limit i am putting lower limit if i put t here we will have t raised to n e raised to minus t minus sign is there getting minus sign is there but if i put 0 0 raised to anything 0 so and 0 into anything 0 so that's why we'll have 0 there is minus sign so it is a constant when we solve integration we always take constants outside so that minus sign will come outside minus minus will have plus plus n is also constant i am taking it as outside so in integration we will have simply x raised to n minus 1 e raised to minus x dx okay so this is equal to limit t tends to infinity minus t raised to n upon e raised to t see that e raised to minus t is there power has a minus sign so if you shift at denominator the power will have plus sign so that's why i'm shifting it at denominator we will have e raised to t plus n integration 0 to t x raised to n minus 1 e raised to minus x dx so now i am applying the limit t tends to infinity so if i put here t is equal to infinity we will have infinity at numerator as well as we will have infinity at denominator so that means when we apply the limit we will have infinity upon infinity form so we supposed to use l hospitals rule okay so i am not going to solve it in detail but by l hospitals rule by solving it we are getting a value zero so that's why i am writing directly here 
So this is equal to 0 plus n. Here we have to put t is equal to infinity. Okay. So actually I use L hospitals rule. So I should mention by L hospitals rule. Okay. By L hospitals rule. So this is equal to n. But did you notice this is a definition of gamma function again, which we started with the same. But that time we had power n here and we have power n minus 1. So that's why this is a definition of gamma n. So we started with gamma n plus 1 and finally we got that, that is nothing but n gamma n. So this is a required right hand side. So in this way we prove this result. Okay, we stop here. Thank you. Bye bye.